So today we're going to talk about three things that must happen before a man knows you're the one. And this is for those men over 40 years old. Now we should decide what the term the one is. Um, or, I mean, this begs the question, what is the one? To me, the one represents that person that you're going to go the distance with, meaning this is a person that wants to be a life partner or that person that you want as your life partner. To me, I focus predominantly on those that are seeking those types of long-term life partner type relationships. And while certainly hooking up is very common these days, friends with benefits is common these days, situationships are common these days, and casual relationships probably represent a majority of those non-married couples that are out there. They're in a casual relationship. But I'm going to share with you what men are looking for when they are that want a life partner, what they, what, how they know that they're with the one. That's kind of interesting. Yesterday in my live stream video, towards the very end, and the video was called The Biggest Mistakes Women Make When Dating, there was a woman who came on the live chat on the hot seat. And her question was, how do I get my friends with benefits back, this man that she had irritated? or you know, got angry, upset at, and she wanted to get this man back. And what was fascinating to me, as she was sharing the backstory of this friends with benefits with a man who was 15 years younger, all she could do is talk about him and she wouldn't look in the mirror for herself. She wouldn't look at her own sovereignty. She wouldn't take ownership in her own life. Ladies, if you want to be recognized as the one, now, the man she was with is a man who has multiple, multiple friends with benefits. He's a player. We're not talking about those men. We're talking about those emotionally grown up men who seek a life partner. You see, grown up emotion, emotionally grown up men who seek a life partner are looking something completely different than the hookup men, the friends with benefits men, like this woman was experiencing those situationships or those casual relationships. And the reason why we're talking about men over 40 is men in their 20s and 30s are oftentimes, if they're serious about a life partner, they are specifically looking for a wife. They want the mother of their children. He is going to set a very high standard of what he wants in a person. And my suspicion is you're seeking someone of high standard yourself. That's what 20 and 30 year old men do. See, when we hit 40, Roughly about 75% of the people in the dating marketplace who are over 45 years old are most likely divorced, divorced with children or divorced. And that comes with it a completely different set of circumstances in evaluating a healthy, happy relationship. So when a man, so this is one of the reasons why a lot of men fall into the user or spender category those men who want companion, well, some men just want hooking up. They're in it for the short-term gain, okay? That's probably 20% of the population. And I'm excluding those scam artists out there. Let's put that in a separate category. People that you can actually meet. 20% of men, this is anecdotally speaking, are probably what I call users. They have a short-term gain. They have, well, they're in it for the short run, their own needs. And I say 60% are what's known as spenders. They want companionship. They want connection. They want sex, but they don't want commitment. They don't want commitment. What I suspect, if you're watching my channel, you seek that grower builder, that man who wants a life partner, that man that's going to go the distance, that man that's going to invest in the relationship. He's going to be emotionally open. He's going to be emotionally expressive. He seeks a life partner. Now, what he's looking for is a woman who first, unlike that woman I was speaking of earlier that had weak self-esteem, weak self-worth, what he's looking for is a woman who actually has her own, let me reframe that, who has embodies strong self-esteem, strong self-awareness, strong self-confidence. And I say strong, we'll just say, we'll, we'll go easier, self-aware self-esteem, self-confidence, self-reliance. She is in her sovereignty. What does that mean? She's not dependent upon a man 
for a relationship. You see, throughout history, women have been rather dependent upon men for their survival. Well, thankfully, we no longer live in that environment. Thankfully, we are in a space where women are not dependent upon men. You are empowered. That's a great place to be. This sets you apart from those who actually are in a desperate place, like that woman I spoke of, who desperately, and it saddens me because she just wants to be loved. That's all. But sadly, she doesn't love herself. She would benefit by at least starting with my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. There's a link below to get a copy of my book. So what are those three things that must happen for a man to know you're one? Well, let's start with the beginning stage of dating. Certainly there is a mutual attraction that happens in the early stage of dating. Now, folks, we have to recognize there's something known as the deception of chemistry. The deception of chemistry is that chemist, most human beings believe that chemistry equals relationship success. Chemistry is merely meant to bond us temporarily to mate with one another. That's what chemistry is about. Chemistry is about mating with one another to make babies. That's what that's about. Now, chemistry certainly gets us excited when we have butterflies, all these types of things. When we feel enthusiastic, we feel a sense of limerence, we feel a sense of love. Yes, that feels euphoric. But that can also be, I believe, that very deceptive. So it starts with that mutual attraction for one another. And by the way, dating is a in getting to know another human being, that's what dating is about. It's a vetting process to decide if this person is someone I want to explore a deeper relationship with. So it's an intentional investigative, investigational process, investigation process of compatibility. That's part of the process. And within this process, ideally, you're doing social activities, you're doing hobbies, you're doing mutual interests, you're spending time with family and friends, you're traveling together, you, you, you operate as a team with one another. You're physically intimate with one another, and you both desire, hopefully, either moving in together or getting married with someone. It's important to know that motive, to have clarity on that motive. Do you have a short-term mating strategy or do you have a long-term mating strategy? Those of my clients that have a long-term mating strategy, they use one of my techniques that I teach in my coaching program that's called radical honesty, pre-qualifying your prospect. And also another one of the, um, the exercises we do is gauge his emotional maturity. Is he one of those dysfunctional men I was talking about the earlier, those users and spenders, versus how do you determine if he's a grower or a builder? Grower builders have their act together. They're very clear about commitment. They're emotionally grown up. They have good relationship skills. Now, I know in a sea of dysfunctionality, it might seem like that doesn't exist. It's one of the reasons why in a recent video I talked about, it's not about where to meet quality men. It's how can I be seen by a quality guy? How can he see me through all the other people out there? How can he see me? Well, first you have to put a great representation of yourself out there so you can be seen. That's where the mutual attraction begins. And as you get to know each other, these three things must happen. So the first thing is, a man must accept you for who you are. Does anyone remember the movie When Harry Met Sally? Sally and, and Harry were unique characters. They had their own picadillos, as uh, Robin Williams said in Goodwill Hunting. But he accepted that she, maybe she's a little bit neurotic in her life. He accepted that that's part of her behavior. See, when we accept another human being for who they are, we move one step closer to knowing that this is the person you want to be with. And by the way, we know who someone is usually within three to six months. We can figure a person out. Usually the first 90 days are a little bit tricky because human beings show up as the ambassador of them best selves, as uh, Chris Rock would talk about. By the six month mark, a person knows who you are and they've either accepted who you are. Now, recognizing that we all have differences with human beings. Oftentimes, one of the challenges 
is when there's a difference, we don't even tolerate the difference. We don't understand the difference. And certainly learning to accept differences is part of the process of knowing somebody is the one. Now we wanna take it a step further. When a man or woman genuinely appreciates their partner, see, here's the tricky part. We might, a lot of couples find themselves where they appreciate 80% of their partner. They accept 80% of their partner, but there's 20% you don't like. There's 20% you don't appreciate. See, if you're battling against tolerating the things you don't like, or the things you don't appreciate, this becomes a struggle to know if this is really the one. Does anyone remember watching the show Friends? Monica and Chandler, they were friends for years. They hooked up one night at Ross's wedding in, uh, in England. They had sex. They got on the sex train. They'd already built up the friendship piece. And then they began a relationship. Now, Monica and Chandler, like every one of those characters, Monica was very unusual. She had high OCD. <laughs> she was a perfectionist. She had everything clean. She had to be in charge. She was a control freak. But you see, Mon um, Chandler didn't just accept that about her personality. He appreciated that about her personality. He appreciated the good, the bad, the ugly. He appreciated the foibles, the picadillos, as Robin Williams used in Good Hill Will Hunting. Certainly when a man accepts his partner or a woman accepts her partner and we begin to appreciate your partner, then we, we lean into this third stage that must happen for couples to be able to go the distance. This is one of the hardest phases for those of us in midlife, especially because as we age, we come to the table with a lot more stuff. We have a lot more luggage. And for a lot of people, this is where they struggle. And this is true for men, and this is true for women alike. Do you know there's something I've heard, and I'll share what it is in a moment, but you know what I've heard from women? I don't want to be a nurse, and I don't want to be a purse. Why is that so prevalent today? Because as we get closer to 60, our mortality, the days in front of us starts to shrink versus the days behind us. So if for a man to know you're the one, he has to step into this role. And ladies, you have to step into this role as well. And that is, I will take care of you. I want to take care of you. I want to take care of you. See, until a man declares that stake in the ground, I want to take care of you. It's going to be very difficult for him. He might accept you. He might appreciate you. But without going into that space of, I want to take care of you, I will take care of you. And this is true for women and men alike. And that's why I come back and I hear this narrative over and over again. I don't want to be a nurse. I don't want to be a purse. I can understand why that might, because you recognize that as we are aging, this is the reality of life. You know, my father lived to be almost 99 years old. Let's just say for argument, he, argument's sake, he was 60 and he was divorced. He still had another 39 years of life left in him. Now, he's the exception, not the rule. The average person has about 80 years of life in him. That means tw if you're 60, you have 20 years of life left in you. Wouldn't you want to spend maybe maybe the first 10 years, it's amazing with a partner, and then you have to be willing to take care of them, and that's the price you pay. See, sadly, just like that woman I spoke of earlier, she just wanted some occasional companionship, occasional connection, occasional sex. And a lot of people, that's why they choose to be with hookups and friends with benefits and situationships and casual relationships. I'm here to say, I'm, I'm willing to go down with the ship and say, you know what? I want that life mate. I want you to stake that in the ground, put a stake in the ground, say, I want a life mate. I am willing to take care of someone provided I accept them for who they are. And I certainly appreciate who they are. This isn't for the faint of heart. Dating, dating in and of itself is a 
can be a very traumatic experience. I mean, emo let me reframe that. It can be an emotionally draining experience. It can be an emotionally frustrating experience. This, this isn't for the faint of heart. And relationships require effort. And in many cases, for those of us in midlife, it requires Herculean effort. Most humans, they want, it's like this. They want that quarter million dollar job, but they don't want to go into work. They just figure just because I show up to work, I don't have to do anything at work. That's the delusion most human beings are operating on from the dating, mating, and relating realm. And the reason why my channel and I'm screaming at the top of my lungs sometimes is to encourage personal development, self-help, spiritual work, to encourage working with a coach like myself. Because believe it or not, those who do the work have a greater, put the odds more in their favor to attract the kind of relationship they most seek. And so to recognize that these three things must happen for a man or a woman to know that the one, to accept the person for who they are. You've heard the saying, men marry women hoping they don't change and women marry men hoping they do change. See, when we reach that space of acceptance, we've reached kind of one level of love. When we reach that space of appreciation for that other person, we cannot fall in love with a person if we don't appreciate them. We might fall in, an, in attachment to another human being, but I don't think it's real love until we lean into a space of genuine appreciation. And lastly, I wanna take care of you. I will take care of you. I'll take care of you. You have to be willing to do that for another, folks. And if you want it to be received as well, it starts by being in that embodied place for yourself. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Post a comment below. I do my best to read them all in the first 24 hours. If you did find value in this video, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if you want to connect with me directly, there's links below to schedule a discovery call to see if working with a coach is right for you. There's my group called Midlife Love Mastery. You can follow me on Instagram. There's my dating vows and all the books I recommend as well as my book listed below. All right, we're going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.